Hello everyone, God bless you. It's your brother Sam Rock right here on The Blaze, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 p.m. sharp for The Blaze, the Bible study live right here at soulwinningswithaz.org. School is coming back. I see them. They're going school shopping. They're getting their school supplies. Parents are running around getting stuff for their kids. Um, it's a blessing for the parents to get stuff for their kids to start off a new year. I know when I was a kid and I was growing up in school, um, you know, that, that first two weeks of school, you wanted to look fresh. You wanted to have the, the, the best bag, backpack. You wanted to have all your pencils and pens and your notebooks and your loose leaves and all that. But I was fortunate to have parents that cared enough um, to get involved in my life when it came to school. Uh, on the flip side of that, there are parents that are not able right now to um, do that for their kids and they need help. Amen. So I decided and it was put on my heart by the Lord to just prepare our minds, prepare our lives, prepare our hearts to return to school. Whether you're a parent, whether you're a student going to grade school or to college, you need to listen to this because God is all up in back to school. Amen. And he wants to speak to us by way of his Holy Spirit through his word for back to school. Amen. And also, I'm going to give you some insider information about your student rights. You know, there's a student bill of rights in schools. You need to know your rights. Amen. Stand up for your faith right here in the blaze. So let's take it to prayer. And this prayer is going to be a special prayer. I'm going to be praying uh, for the teachers and students. And I'm going to use five Bible verses to pray for the teachers and students. Because I don't know if you realize it, but every year for the past, I want to say five, six years, there's been a lot of things happening in schools, public schools, all kinds of schools all around the country, all around the world. And they're violent things, violent acts. Uh, people have died uh, and people have been just injured in schools. I believe that if we continue to put prayer in school and leave the word of God, the Bible in school, amen, and cover the school system in prayer, I believe God will raise up and send out angels, our queen angels, ministering angels to protect our children, to protect the parents, to protect the uh, students, to protect uh, the staff, to ex to protect the administration, and of course, all the people that are involved, even the student aides. Amen. So I'm going to use Romans chapter 13, 4, where it says the authorities are God's servants sent for your good. So first of all, we have to understand that God sends authority, set up authority for our good, not for our bad. Matthew 10, 24, Jesus said the student is not above the teacher, nor a servant above his master. Amen. So we have to be in line as a student, respect your teacher. Amen. Whether you agree with your teacher or not of what they're teaching, as long as they're not forcing you to do things that are not morally correct or that's against your faith, just know that they're the teacher and they're put there by God. For 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Not training in unrighteousness, but training in righteousness. Amen. We have to always understand that all scripture is God-breathed. Scripture, the Holy Bible, the Word of God is God-inspired. Amen. And no teacher, no doctor, no professor can tell you otherwise. They want to argue with the scripture. Amen. You go ahead and let them argue with the scripture. You continue to pray for an atheist teacher. You continue to pray for agnostic teachers. You continue to pray for, you know, flat out immoral teachers. Pray for their life because the Bible says we were just the same. But by the grace of God, God changed us and they need to change too. command and teach these things. First Timothy chapter four, verse 11. That's very simple command and teach these things. Teachers need to teach. Amen. And students need to learn. Titus chapter 2 verse 7 says, And everything set them an example by doing what is good. And your teachings show integrity, seriousness, and soundness of speech that cannot be condemned. So that those who oppose you may be ashamed because they have nothing bad to say about us. Amen. Be If you're a Christian and you're going to school and you're a student, Make sure uh, you don't have, when they oppose you, 
they're going to be ashamed because they have nothing bad to say about us. They should have nothing bad to say about us. They could talk about you and speak bad of you, maybe lie about you, but we shouldn't give them reason for that. And if there's no reason and they do it anyway, again, that's why prayer is so important. So, Father God, I ask, Lord Jesus, that you will protect every teacher, every student, amen, with your word, the word over them. We spoke five scriptures over them, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, safety for the students, the teachers, the aides, the staff, and the administration of every school by the sound of my voice in this prayer for our country, for our nation, for our world system, the school systems, Lord God. I pray specifically for Allentown, Bethlehem, Easton, from my territory, Lord God, and Phillipsburg and the surrounding areas, that you, Lord God, will touch the hearts of every individual that calls upon you to be saved that are rescued, that are born again, they will go into the school anointed, filled, prepared, and ready to start a new school year off for your glory, for your honor. And we praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. It's been put on my heart, ladies and gentlemen, to do this because we need to know what we're facing um, in our society and today. Amen. So it's amazing that we could take Ancient scriptures, a book that was created thousands of years ago, right? That was published thousands of years ago and bring it to today. And it still, amen, applies. There's no other book like the Bible. There's no other book that you can read out there other than the Bible. The Bible is the most amazing book because every time you read the Bible, the author of the Bible is present. Amen. How about that? So you could go to school, pick up uh, a dictionary pick up a history book, pick up a math book, amen. Those authors that created those books and those textbooks, they're not there. But when you pick up the word of God, amen, he's there because his word is alive, it's active, it's sharper than any double-edged sword. So welcome back to school, students. You know you have a student bill of rights in your school. This this is why you need to know your rights. So I'm going to take some time and, and just go over it a little bit because... If you don't know your rights, you might be fooled by or threatened by um, teachers or students that say, hey, you can't do that or you can't do this. And you might be saying, well, I guess I can't and walk away in ignorance, not knowing that you do have rights. Amen. And this is not to force your faith or to force your belief on another student or on a teacher or disrespect someone and say, I know my rights. No. When you know your rights. Amen then you're able to speak accordingly to the authorities of the school system, the school board, the teachers, maybe students, fellow students, and let them know that you do have a right and you're protected by the rights of our Constitution. Amen? Governed by the Constitution. So I got this from the Liberty Institute. Um, They're committed to defending our religious liberty rights. And they want to ensure that public schools abide by the First Amendment's guarantees of free speech. Listen closely. Free speech, expression, and the free exercise of religion. Remember, uh, non-believers, people who don't know God, they call us religious people. They call Christians religious. Okay. So they want to call us religious. Then we have to exercise our religion, right? (laughs) So for public school censors or tells you you can't um, speak out in your religion or you can't express or you can't practice your faith and you're unsure if the public school's actions violate your First Amendment freedoms, you need to contact Liberty Institute right away or Christian Law Association. Amen. These two organizations and there's a couple of more out there. These two organizations um, I've dealt with in the past and they're Great. Free? Great. Filled with the Spirit? Great. And they know the law. That's great, right? So we need to stand together. We need to stand up for our beliefs. We need to stand up for our faith. When you go back to school, have a smile on your face and know that the one who authorized all word, all scripture, the Lord Jesus, that Jesus lives in you. Amen. Not the Jesus of the Mormons, not the Jesus of the Muslims, not the Jesus that society is calling out. No, the Jesus of the scriptures. Amen. Because we know in Romans 13, 4, we read it. The authorities are God's servants sent for whose good? Sent for your good. 
except for my good. Amen. So it's okay if people don't understand. You know, a lot of people disagree with us Christians because they just don't understand. They don't think it's possible for the redemptive message that we have for the story of the gospel to even be real. They don't understand it. And neither did I and neither did you before the Holy Spirit of God dwelled in you. Right. It was like a story that never made sense. When I was growing up, I knew about Jesus, amen, but I didn't know who he was. I knew that he died for the world, but I never knew he died for me. I knew he was crucified on the cross, but I never knew he was crucified on the cross to forgive me. Now it's personal. Now I know. Now he lives in me, amen, and he lives in you. So if you're a student standing up for your rights, amen, but you need to walk in the law, right, obeying um, the law of the of the land and of course obeying the law of God and in both ways you'll be blameless not perfect but blameless the word says that um, when they come and oppose you amen they that oppose you they may be ashamed because they don't have nothing bad to say about you you shouldn't give an opportunity for people to say things bad about you if they want to you know slander backbite gossip that's on them. But if it's not true, it's not true. So it shouldn't bother you as much as if it was true. Now, if it's true and they're saying things, uh, they saw you do things and they heard you say things and you're involved in things that you know that you're being convicted by the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit of God, and they're calling you out on it, praise the Lord. Repent, turn from that stuff that you're doing that you know is not right in school. Amen. And turn back and ask God for forgiveness. Amen. And he, he will forgive you. The Bible says he will not turn anyone away who comes to him. He won't do that. Amen. So we need to know how to stand up for our religious freedom so that these freedoms will be preserved, right? Not only for this generation, but for generations to come. There's a lot of things happening. Amen. If you, if you know about current events, there's a lot of laws being passed now that are against, directly against scripture. Amen. Um, families being tampered with, the order of family, amen. Um, teenagers now and, and, and young adults and kids are, are being emancipated from their parents. There's, you know, they're giving the right to sue parents and to ask them to be arrested and all this crazy stuff that when I was a kid, that would be unheard of, amen. But it's happening now, so let's deal with it today, right? Let's deal with it now. So the First Amendment, first of all, protects. The First Amendment protects, among other things, your right to free speech and free expression of your religious beliefs. So, when you're in school, it's okay. Sit down and pray. It's okay. As long as you're not disrupting your class, right? As long as you're paying attention and you're not praying in the middle of a lecture that your professor is giving. Amen. You know, we have to do things in order. You can pray before a class starts. Or pray when class is over. Pray during your, your your free time. Pray during your lunch time. Amen. There's ways to do this. But you're protected. You could express that. Our free expression to pray to a living God. Amen. That's covered by the First Amendment. We need to know your rights. Student Bill of Rights. In your public schools. In your private schools. All of that. They might have some uh, issues with it. Right. But it's okay. Uh, as long as they're not forcing anything upon you or threatening to kick you out because you're exercising your free expression of your religious beliefs, then it's okay. But if they're trying to enforce things that are against your protected rights, amen, of the First Amendment, then contact Liberty Institute or Christian Law Association. And they'll be happy to assist you. Amen. Um, they'll listen to your story. They'll listen to your situation. And they'll take action if necessary. Great stuff to know. And I know 90% of people out there listening did not know about this. Okay. So the First Amendment, first of all, protects. The First Amendment prohibits. It prohibits a school district from being hostile towards religious beliefs and expressions. And this is amazing because this has been happening. You could look it up, Google it, how students cannot uh, speak in the name of Jesus during their graduation speeches. It's happened that students' mics have been turned off 
Um, they have been threatened that if they give speeches in the name of Jesus or use the name of Jesus in their, uh, you know, in their schoolyards when they're playing sports, they've been threatened to be kicked out. This is going on today in our time. Unlike the government, students may promote specific religious beliefs or practices. They could do it. You know, when you're in a, a big ball game, football, baseball, whatever it is, there's people that put up the sign John 316. I've never seen those people get kicked out of the stadium. Amen. And John 316, that's one of our uh, flagship verses, right, of the gospel message of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's protected. The First Amendment protects. The First Amendment prohibits. School district can be hostile towards you because you have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and you're a Christian. Amen. Wow. So we need to be empowered. So students out there, parents out there, teachers out there, you love the Lord. The Lord loves you. He wants to empower you. He wants to create in you a hero mentality because greater is the one that lives in you than the one who lives in the world, right? So we need to be greater in our love, greater in our compassion, greater in our moralities, right? Greater at um, listening and doing all the things that the Word of God says we should be doing. So prayer, the Bible, and religious conversations is cool. Because public schools, they have to treat religious expressions such as prayer, right? Reading the Bible and religious discussions the same way they treat similar non-religious expressions. In other words, if you're in a college and there's a, a campus a crusade for Christ, I know they changed the name. Uh, of that organization amen uh, it's okay you could join that just like you could join uh, a group of individuals who uh, uh, practice yoga or you know it, it, it's another group it's just another type of group and public schools have to be um, they can't pick one over another they have to be right across the board they have to be fair <clears throat> so public schools they have to treat religious expression uh, the same way they treat similar non-religious expressions. It's just that simple. And schools, schools may limit topics of conversation during instructional time, of course. Like I said, you're not going to get up and start quoting scriptures while the math teacher is talking about uh, algebra. You know what I mean? Uh, or you're not going to go and, and just grab a mic in the auditorium or in the lunchroom and start just like um, preaching, uh, that's a disruption, right? Unless the Holy Ghost says for you to do that. Let's just say like that. Then don't do it. And God is a God of order. So if there's something going on in class and other students are there, we have to be considerate of the other students. We just can't tune out and turn off, amen, and just disrupt the class. That's not cool. It's not a good look for a child of God. Amen. And it's not uh, abiding by the law because schools can limit topics of conversation during instructional time. But if the school gives the students freedom to talk <clears throat> or even write about whatever the students want, then a school may not ban religious expression during those unrestricted times. If you want to, you know, I've heard um, stories of students that uh, they said, write about the most influential person in your life. And they said Jesus Christ was the most influential person in their life. And those uh, grades have been Fs or Ds. You know what I mean? They flunked. Um, even um, got expelled in some cases. And then parents had to come to the school and be like, what's going on? Um, this person wrote about, you know, Tiger Woods. And my son or daughter writes about Jesus. And it's a problem. It's not a problem writing about Tiger Woods, and I'm not putting Tiger Woods out there. I'm just using him because he's in a celebrity. I'm just using a celebrity's name or Jesus Christ. So if we write about Jesus Christ, you get in trouble. But if you write about any other celebrity out there, you don't. And that's not by the law. That's against the law. And I think sometimes professors, teachers, and student aides, I don't, I don't even think they understand this sometimes. Or they might not even know. Um, so you could excuse them even because they might have not known uh, they might feel threatened or they might think that if they let uh, uh, people speak about uh, belief systems other than what's 
like the culture of the school, then there might be a disruption or there might be some kind of altercation. But I've never seen a case, and I could be wrong, it's just my experience, I've never seen a case of someone being born again, causing um, fights and causing, um, you know, people to run in schools and start shooting in the name of Jesus. I mean, I've never seen that. Amen. So schools, they can limit topics of conversation during instruction time. But if they allow for free freedom to talk or write about whatever, it's okay to express your faith during those unrestricted times. Religious clubs, fine. If a school allows any other non-curricular clubs, if they are, you know, if they have boys club, girls club, you know, swim club, pool club, whatever club, if they have any kind of club, they have to allow religious clubs as well. So a religious club may meet, right? Use the public address system, distribute flies in the same way the school allows a non-curricular club. You ever saw in your school or on your campus, people giving out literature, hey, there's a, a party for a sorority uh, party or, you know, uh, alpha, beta, whatever, a uh, party going on or maybe uh, a social event or maybe, you know, whatever the case may be, they're giving out on the campus, i never seen them having any issues, you know what I mean? So in the same way, in order, you're not, you're not to just go out and throw flies on the floor and put flies in people's face. No, but in, in an orderly way, you could hand out and distribute flies as well, right? Because you're part of a, a religious club. Graduation, these, and this has been big, especially in graduations. In graduations, students can talk about their faith in their speeches, they can, as long as the student speaker is chosen based on neutral criteria such as his or her grades. So here's a, a you know, a grade A student, amen, and they're going to recognize the student. The student comes up and makes a quick speech. They could say, uh, I thank Jesus Christ for giving me the wisdom to get these A's. Should there be no problems? Should be no problems. But there has been problems. And I think there's been problems because um, two reasons. Maybe uh, the school district or the school system or the public school did not know um, that these are not violating anyone's rights or that they know that it's violating rights and they're angry because maybe the student was told not to go there. But the student said, hey, um, I'm empowered. I know my rights. And I'm going to do it because I feel compelled to do it. And the message of the cross and the message of Jesus Christ, uh, whether it offends someone or not, amen, it should still be preached. Why? Because if someone doesn't understand the gospel message, they could go ahead and see it for themselves. They could pick up a Bible for themselves. You know, I highly uh, doubt if Christian students are going around uh, forcing people uh, at gunpoint to read the scriptures. Amen. I think it's still a choice, and by the time of this recording, amen, we're in the year 2015, uh, I don't think anybody's being forced to read the scriptures. I don't think anybody's forced to read the Bible, but if there are questions about the Bible, I'm pretty sure uh, another student that's not a Christian has the right to pick up a, a Bible, right, and read it for themselves. I don't see any issues with that, so there shouldn't be an issue with students um, going up and making speeches about their grades and thanking the teacher, their parents, and God for, you know, allowing them to have those grades. No problem at all, right? Now, let's go to extra stuff like after-school stuff, sports, you know, how is this um, empowering students? How is this creating heroes, right? Students may privately, privately pray, right? Either individually or as a group. At a school athletic competition, such as, you know, a football game, a uh, baseball game, uh, whatever um, your school is involved in. Student assembly, right? Uh, not too long ago, I was at a, a, in a gym of a public high school in Allentown, PA, uh, and they had a, a Christian outreach right there in the gym. It was after hours, so it was extracurricular and sports. It was an activity and there was no problems, no fights. Um, there was no issues. 
as far as I know. So students may privately pray, either individually or as a group, at a school athletic competition, um, student assembly, or other extracurricular activity when school officials, when the teachers, the administration are not involved because they don't have to be involved. And that's another thing. No one's forcing teachers and the administration to be involved. In other words, what I'm saying is no one is, this is not an enforced religion. This is not an enforced faith system. Amen. You know, there's a religion, uh, Islamic religion, uh, Muslims. is the fastest growing religion in the world. If I said it like that, uh, you might be saying, how do you know that? Whatever. But the sources that I got this information from um, disagrees with the fastest growing religion. The sources that I'm getting this information says that it's the fastest enforced religion. It's a big difference. So if I told you that go to school and force people to become Christians, then what I'm telling you is that you need to enforce your beliefs on someone else. And that's not the Christ-like way. That's not the Christian way. And that's not the kingdom way. Amen. But it's okay in the private time and school after school activities you could gather up and pray. As long as the teachers or administrators are not involved and they're not forced to be involved, it should be fine. Students may go and lead pre-activity sports assembly prayer if they want. If, they're, if the school allows pre-activity speech, they could pray. The school does not control the content of the speech, even if the school reviews the speech for vulgarity, etc. Of course, I don't think school systems or school boards or public schools want people going up there um, dropping the F-bomb and the B and the B word and start cursing through their speech. So it's okay for them to censor it, of course. But they can't censor anything that has to do with your personal belief. Amen? That's like telling someone um, that's a Mormon to say, you know what? Um, uh, I can't say what I am, um, but, you know, I'm, I'm here. Then you're violating the Mormon's rights, right? Uh, it's just what it is. The school does not control the content of the speech, even if the school reviews the speech for vulgarity, etc. And it is clear that the speech, uh, that the speech is the students and not the schools, right? I mean, who does this speech belong to? The student that's speaking it, or does it belong to the school system, the school board, or the school that they're in? Amen. So if they're giving you an opportunity to speak. I don't think they could violate your right of doing so, right? Religion and classwork, students may incorporate their faith or religion and assignments so long as the message fits the assignment. Now, you're not going to be talking about, you know, um, David and Goliath when you're supposed to be um, doing a, 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 a sports column. You know what I mean? Unless you want to use it as a metaphor because it just want to make sense. So the message has to fit with the assignment. <clears throat> and if you're a, a Bible reader and you know the Word of God, you could fit the Word of God in any assignment, somehow, some way, because God speaks <clears throat> through so many ways. It, it's the student's own work, right? And it follows assignment directions. So you can incorporate your faith if the message fits the assignment, if the student owns the work. And if it follows assignment directions, for example, if a student is asked to write about a person who is important to the student, the student is free to write about Jesus Christ. If the student is giving a math problem, however, writing about Jesus Christ, instead of answering the problem, that, that's inappropriate. And you, you, you're going to get told about that. It wouldn't make no sense, right? Christmas, a school can celebrate Christmas. I'm going to say it again. A school can, C-A-N, celebrate Christmas as long as the intent is to educate, you know, explain the reason for Christmas and not advance Christianity. You're not going to force students to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. It's not Christian to do that. To for God doesn't even force himself into our hearts. How can we as Christians, students and teachers and parents go and try to force other people to become Christians? Schools are also free not to celebrate Christmas. It's all good. Uh, it's all good. They don't want to celebrate Christmas. The school don't celebrate, but you can celebrate Christmas because you believe in the birth of Jesus Christ. And so do I. So if students are allowed to distribute gifts at a school party, 
then the students may not be prohibited from giving out their gifts just because the gift includes a religious message. In other words, if it says, you know, the birth of Jesus, I've seen some nice, um, you know, uh, wrapping paper that has the birth of Jesus on it during Christmas time. That should not be an issue because you're decorating the package. You brought it, you packaged it, and you're giving it out. Amen. So um, shout out to the Liberty Institute. Amen. For this information. Uh, for more information, you could go to www.libertyinstitute.org or their phone number is 972-941-4444. Just in case you don't believe me that these are the rights. Amen. That students do have. Amen. So this is part one. Amen. Back to school. God bless you. And I hope you got something out of this first part. Amen. And to the next time when you go to school. Thank God that you got a school system and that you're learning. But most importantly, remember that God is good. Peace.